Ladies and gentlemen, if somebody says, I was assigned at birth this specific gender, but I don't identify with this gender, this is the perfect video you can just give them, drink a little coffee, and watch their reaction. You said that we've cherry-picked data. How do you mean by, what, how do you mean that? So it is very unscientific and flawed to pick a single study or a single statistic and to discuss it in isolation. Um, totally agree. Medical experts are able to talk about all of the evidence as a whole. Totally agree. So it's good to look at systematic reviews, right? That's the gold standard of evidence when you're trying to understand whether something works or whether it doesn't. So the British Journal of Medicine looked at 61 systematic reviews with the conclusion that, quote, there is great uncertainty about the effects of puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, and surgeries in young people. The Journal of Endocrine Society came up with the same conclusion, even the American Academy of Pediatrics. They all cite the lack of evidence. And so here's the thing. If you're doing a therapy, and it's, you know, temporary, whatever, it, fine, maybe let's try it, let's see if it works. But when you're talking about permanent physiological changes, do you not agree, just from an ethical standpoint, that you might want extremely strong evidence of the benefits? And there is no systematic review that, that states that there is strong evidence of benefits. Sir, are you aware of how the quality evidence grading system works and how it's applied? Yeah. Yeah, we've read through it. That's why I'm citing these journals. So which journal says something different? I'm, I'm, we should have that debate. Tell me a journal that has done systematic reviews that cites different evidence, that cites strong evidence for benefits of these therapies. The standards of care were developed based on extensive... You're not telling me any journal. You're not telling me any study. Don't That's say standards of care. Yeah. So... Um, Tell me one. The standards of care. That's the, the standards of care. That's, yes, that's, standards that's of not care. a journal. That's not a study. That's not an organization. That's not an institution. You're just saying words. Name one study. Yeah. I'm out of time. I yield. Chairman Guthrie and members of the subcommittee, thank you. Chairman Guthrie and members of the subcommittee, thank you for the opportunity to address you. My name is Miriam Grossman. I am a board certified child, adolescent, and adult psychiatrist author and senior fellow at Do No Harm. I have been taking care of patients for 45 years. I'm going to use my time to respond to Dr. McNamara. First, I'm struck by her use of the phrase sex assigned at birth. Sex is not assigned at birth. Sex is established at conception and it's recognized at birth if not earlier. Dr. McNamara claims that her views are science-based, but to claim that sex is assigned at birth is without any scientific basis whatsoever. Its language misleads people, especially children, into thinking that male and female are arbitrary designations and can change. That is simply not true. Dr. McNamara claims that social and medical interventions are the only evidence-based treatment and that scientific evidence shows it is life-saving. Without it, she's warning us, kids will commit suicide. Well, a growing number of countries have effectively banned the care to which she's referring. And thank God there's been no wave of suicides or other mental health catastrophes. Three years ago, Finland, placed strict limitations on medical interventions for minors. Sweden did the same thing after a 14-year-old girl was found to have osteoporosis and spinal fractures from puberty blockers. An investigation concluded, quote, the risks of anti-puberty uh, and hormone treatment for those under 18 currently outweigh the possible benefits. The UK conducted a review and called the evidence very low. They've also placed severe restrictions on the care that Dr. McNamara calls life-saving. Norway also analyzed the data and has made similar changes in policy. The National Academy of Medicine in France warned, quote, great medical caution must be taken in children and adolescents given the vulnerability of this population and the many undesirable, even serious, complications the therapies cause. Doctors in New Zealand and Australia have published similar statements. Is Dr. McNamara suggesting that all these countries are rejecting evidence-based treatment and placing their kids at risk of suicide? 
Regarding that point of view, Finland's gender expert, Dr. Rita Kaltiela, said, quote, it's purposeful disinformation, the spreading of which is irresponsible. All seven countries, and Florida too, of course, concluded that kids don't need their development interrupted, the girls don't need their periods stopped and their voices lowered, and the boys don't need to grow breasts. What they need is psychotherapy. I have other objections to Dr. McNamara's testimony. She insists that her position, only hers, represents standard medical care. What she doesn't want you to know is that there is no standard. There's a debate. There's a fierce debate. And on the side opposite her stand such prominent figures as Stephen Levine, Kenneth Zucker, Paul McHugh, and James Cantor, among others. These doctors are giants in the field. They have been treating transgender patients and gathering data and publishing papers about them, and I mean no disrespect here, but since before Dr. McNamara was born. The point is that those veteran clinicians and others who have wisdom and experience are ignored because they disagree with the current narrative. They're against medical interventions for the same reason those seven countries are. There is no evidence of long-term benefit, but there is evidence of harm. I'll end by quoting Jamie Reed, the courageous whistleblower from the Children's Gender Clinic in St. Louis. I believe that that hospital receives the medical education funding that we're discussing today. She said that doctors at that clinic said, we are building the plane while we are flying it. We are building the plane while we are flying it. That's how they described the treatment at their gender clinic. Our precious tax dollars should not support such a perilous experiment. Thank you. We will build it for you. Just in case, believe in us. Don't talk to your parents. Stay here. Take this. Bada beam, bada boom. I always like to do things in my life when I could practice it a few times. If I want to go dive in deep sea, I start diving in small pools. Everything a little, little, little. Something about gender reassignment, it gives me the ick because it's so freaking permanent. People don't even realize exactly what's going on. All you know is they're going to turn you off and you're back. You're supposed to be happy. You have no idea what's going to happen. And I'm sure you can find some cases of some people doing great. Good for you. And I wish you the best. I also wish you could only do it at 18 years old. But since left wing people have been telling me, I know all the information we need to trust the doctor. Why suddenly you can choose also which doctor you're going to listen. I'm not happy with my body. I was not. I wanted to be white. I wanted to have two eyes. I wanted to have rocking roll long hair. I didn't want to have afro. I wanted to have moss. Hey, I wanted to have a manly. I wanted a beard. Look for all the names that you heard and do your own research on both sides. You would be surprised. It might be a hard pill to swallow, 